Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here with a stamina beginner guide for PvE gear. You're going to want to watch this video whether you're starting out or progressing through endgame. I'm going to tell you how to start just bare bones in the game all the way to the latest and greatest trials gear, a path to progress, and what you should be aiming for as a stamina DPS in the Elder Scrolls Online. So ironically, when we're talking about stamina DPS, there's a very important choice that really doesn't pertain to magic, and that's the weapon types you use. So in general, you have a couple of different options. Typically, stamina plays melee due to the gear and or weapon choices in their damage. Almost everyone uses a bow as a back bar weapon. Primary reason you're going to use it is Arrow Barrage does very, very well of the other morph, Endless Hail, as a single target and AoE ability. However, the main spammable snipe isn't necessarily the top tier damage, and so most folks do not decide to front bar this and almost all back bar it as a secondary weapon. So that leaves us with a really important choice to make, dual wield or 2H. They have pros and cons, let me explain. Two-handed is a very good place to start. It's pretty much used a lot of times in PvP, but it's very good solo PvE as well. The primary reason is Cleave morphed into Brawler from Two-Hander, the third ability down, can be absolutely fantastic ability because it provides a big shield for you, allowing to stay in melee range as a new or experienced player without dying instantly. It's the third ability down, Brawler, you can't beat it. It also has a, an Execute that can be single target AoE with Executioner, and it has a really strong burst heal with Rally, the ultimate is lacking a little bit, and the passives in two-handed are really set up for PvP. So typically, I shy away from two-hander unless doing Batashram Hollows or VMA, and I need something just to get me through if I don't have the latest and greatest gear. So that gives us dual wield. Why would you use dual wield? Well, the passives and active skills, along with the gear sets that it later on are in the game, are top tier for DPS. Dual Build also has had a change in giving you a very strong heal with the very first ability morphed into Bloodthirst. Flurry morphed into Bloodthirst will make your main spam bow heal you, and it's very, very strong. Not to mention the second ability in there can be a damage over time that also can heal you. And then lastly, you have the ultimate, which can heal like a truck, Rend. 16 seconds, it's AoE in front of you, it's gonna heal based on the damage done. No, this is not top tier damage, but it's fantastic if you lack Pale Order or other gear sets that everyone else is using. The loadout that I went to get Trifectas and VMA and Batashram before Pale Order and all these fancy gear sets was Dual Wield Bow. Because of this reason, I use Rend, I use Bloodthirst, and other skills and or abilities to help me get by until I got that latest and greatest gear. So too long didn't read version of this. 2H, great to start out, especially if you're planning on doing solo primarily, or you like the playstyle. Dual wield, very, very good PvE endgame for damage. Make that choice and stick a bow on your back bar. Now that we have a basic understanding of the weapons that we're going to use, we have some item sets. Overland is by far the easiest because if you just start the game, whether you're at level 10 or champion point 1000, you can obtain Overland gear sets, and they're quite relevant even in today's game. One that's fantastic from Rothgar is Briarheart. This is used in endgame PvE and it can be great at the start. What it's going to do is give you some crit and when you do crit, you're going to get a flood of weapon damage and you're going to get a little bit of healing when you do crit. So it's going to give you a burst window, about 10 seconds, without 100% uptime. But I'm telling you right now, when you're starting out, you're a new player, you do not have pale order, this thing will be absolutely fantastic. And it's also fantastic for doing trifecta runs later on, and even the latest and greatest dungeons. Briarheart from Rothgar, considering it a must priority out the gate. Now, if you're watching this, I'm going to consider that you might not have a crafter. And if you do not have a crafter and you're not able to get a basic set of craftable gear, Year, the bare bones minimum I would pair with Briarheart is Witchman's. What this is going to do is when you use an ultimate, it's kind of give you like a battle roar from the Dragonite. It's going to give you a flood of resources, including health. That's primarily what you struggle on with the Stam builds up front is resource sustain and healing. Where magic can just use a shield and rely on that, stamina has a rough go, specifically with resource sustain, unless your class kit has it, 
or Big Burst Healings, which means it's from the Rift and really pairs well with Briarheart because you're going to be constantly using ultimates, you're going to be constantly critting, and you're going to be able to heal, resource, sustain, and stay in the fight. And that leaves the weapons. So you're rock two five piece, I would go with agility weapons. Very, very cheap to get. You can get this in Imperial City, you can get this on Trader or in the Dungeon Finders. This two piece is going to be active only, but it's going to give you a lot of max stamina, which is going to add to your damage and or heal. So five Witchmans, couple of Agility, and five Briarheart is a great place to start. Now you've been playing for a while, you got some crafters, what I would consider doing is the baseline starter set is five Briar Hearts with Hunding's Rage. This is a craftable set, and the five piece is gonna give you weapon damage. It's a staple in most builds. The thing with stamina, though, is you're gonna pair that with a Monster Helm. Monster Helms don't seem to be as strong with stamina just because of the lack of variety. So a couple different options in Monster Helm. If you want something for damage, Saline's is a good fit. Saline's comes from Saline's Web and can do really good damage and is also very good in PvP. Another good one for resource sustain and just overall survivability is, you know what, my favorite Engine Guardian comes from Darkshade Cavern and is very easy to get a hold of. And lastly, a simple set and forget set is Slime Crawl. This comes from Wayrest Sewers and you're going to gain minor berserk at all times for having a two-piece monster helm. This is not applicable or relevant for every single class, but if you don't know a place to start, this is just simply set it on, do more damage if you don't have the buff already, and a really nice one. After you get the Overland sets, you're going to try to get a craftable set. You're going to try to get a Monster Helm. You're going to throw those on so you'll have two five pieces and you'll drop the weapon. And then you'll have a Monster Helm. This will get you by veteran dungeons for a very long time. But it's not going to be top tier trials and or top tier solo play. So solo play, what I highly recommend is Vicious Ophidian. This is the counter to false gods for magic users. It's going to reduce the cost of your stamina abilities at all time when you kill an enemy. It's going to give you back stamina and major expedition. It makes you fast, it makes you survivable, and it makes you have a lot of resource sustain. So what I highly recommend for solo players is pairing Vicious Ophidian with Briarheart. This is fantastic in solo contexts like VMA, Batashram Hollows, or even just soloing veteran dungeons just because you want to do it. Let's say you're not able to get Vicious Ophidian because you don't like running trials, you don't have a group, and you're not able to collect that. No problem. Vengeance Leech is another really good set. This is obtained from uh, PvP and only comes in a three-piece. And what it does is it's going to give you some of the slice of what Vicious Ophidian does. When you kill an enemy, it's going to heal you and restore stamina and magic. It makes you very tanky. It's not going to have the damage as much as Vicious Ophidian. You're not going to have the mobility or reduced cost but it can get you by, especially if you don't like Trials. And while we're on the topic of Solo, uh, a point of contention is Pale Order. This is through the Mythic sets, and it's just absolutely fantastic. The downside of playing a Stamina Melee build is the majority of us don't have a main spammable that heal us, and or the optimal damage does not reward a main spammable that heals us. You're going to have to play in Melee range, which is unforgiving in and of itself, especially Solo, and you're also not going to have a main spammable as you progress later on that's optimal damage that heals you as well so pale order fills those two gaps it's kind of a pain to get a hold of and if you don't like doing the mythics i totally get it because i don't either but this thing will make a massive difference again you don't have to use the one piece mythic you can use a monster helm instead if you do decide to use the pale order mythic what you're going to do is drop the monster helm and just use one piece of slime crawl so the optimal solo set that i run is one piece slime crawl one piece pale order two five pieces vicious ophidian and briarheart that's going to get very very high vma batashram hollow and you're going to be super tanky and survivable if the reason i keep harping on solo and why that's in your clear path to progression step number two is it's going to give you the ability to get the two item sets you're going to need to be top tier DPS. And one is the Maelstrom Perfected Bow. This here is going to increase the damage of Volley. Essentially, it makes Endless Hail or Arrow Barrage, whichever morph you go, 
an absolute juggernaut in terms of damage, both single target and AOE. And that's why pretty much everyone backs bars a bow because of this ability, though you don't have to. Then once you obtain that, you're going to work on Vatishram Hollows, specifically getting the Vatishram Daggers perfected if you can. This is going to make your main spamble Hidden Blade morphed into Shrouded Daggers hit absolutely ridiculous hard. To give you an example on my Khajiit Nightblade in a dungeon without optimal buffs, I can crit with the Shrouded Daggers for 70,000. One ability. This right here is game changing for stamina DPS. It's the weapons, not the monster helms, not the mythics that make you do a ton of damage as a stam build. So step one, overland, you're going to get some overland, you're going to work towards crafting, and then you're going to work towards monster helms. Step two, you're going to work towards an ideal solo set. That way you can run through VMA, Maelstrom Arena, and Vatishram Hollows and get them and collect the weapons. Now you have the weapons, now you have a good solo build, you have a good sense of the game. Now you start working towards a trials or optimal DPS build. So the Trials or Optimal DPS build, you're going to use your weapons and then two five pieces and pretty much not use a Monster Helm and or a Mythic because the weapons are so optimal. One really strong set is Togvins. This comes from Frostball and you can do normal to collect this. What it's going to do is ramp up your weapon critical and at 10 stacks, it's going to give you Minor Force, a very important buff that you're going to run and need on your bar, typically provided by Barb Trap. Huge, absolutely fantastic five piece on you at all times another five piece that's fantastic is kinraz and this comes from black drake villa what this is going to do is while doing lighter heavy attacks it's going to build up stacks once you get five stacks you're going to get major berserk at all times as long as you keep up the stacks increasing your damage done by 10 percent not only that it's going to provide everyone in a 12 meter radius minor berserk that same thing that we get from slime crawl it's that powerful so those two five pieces are what i highly recommend that almost everyone can use and they're obtained in dungeons you don't even have to do trials If you wanted to get a really juicy trial set, you could always go with Relicans. What this is going to do is reward your lighter heavy attacks up to 10 stacks while you're light attack weaving and do a ton of damage. But the Togman Kendra setup can do just fine. You don't have to run trials if you don't want to. Another really good set that comes in heavy, so you might have to drop weapons for it, is Berserking Warrior. This is going to ramp up your weapon critical up to 10 stacks as well, so giving you a ton of critical. So again, to summarize, if you're just starting out, you're going to work on Overland because you don't need any traits to craft it. Priority is to get Briarheart. You can also buy that from the traders. Once you get Briarheart, you start doing some crafting, pair that with Hunting's Rage, and then start working on the Monster Helms. You can use Agility in the meantime until you don't have the Monster Helms. The Monster Helm, either for survivability or resource sustain, depending on what you struggle with. To have those two five pieces in a Monster Helm, then you work towards the solo arenas. You're going to either a pick up Vicious Ophidian or Vengeance Leech to help you with those solo arenas. You also have the option of working on the Mythics to get Pale Order or something like Death Dealer's Fade if you don't like running that. That's going to drastically improve your survivability, especially playing melee up close and by yourself. Once you get that done, then you're going to run through VMA over and over and over to get that bow. You're going to run through Vanish Ram Hollows to get the weapons. It does not have to be the perfected. You can just do the normal, but getting those weapons will be an absolute game changer. If you're done with that, then start consider running Black Drake Villa or Frost Vault for the two five pieces. You're going to pair those two five pieces with your weapons, and you're going to have a really strong stamina DPS build. Is this going to be the highest DPS build um, on planet Earth? Probably not but it will get you by and you'll be able to do almost all of the latest and greatest content in the Elder Scrolls Online. And once you start learning and hanging out with other people, you'll start gaining those trial set and take it to the next level. Okay, oh, gang, that is a stamina beginner's guide giving you step-by-step -step progression. I hope you got something out of this. If you want the tank and healer version of this or our PvP version of this or something, please, 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 please leave me a comment. I appreciate you all watching. Thanks to my Patreons. Believe it or not, this really helps me pump out the videos. So if you consider being a Patreon, I will be able to do a lot more videos and do a lot more things like this. So please consider hit that subscribe like if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Watching.